Thank you. It's an honor to be asked to speak, and I want to thank uh, the team of SLUS uh, and uh, Exchange Rates uh, for this. It's really awesome. And it's great. It's been, we've had so many great conversations. Okay. All right, so I came with books. This is sort of like a book report. Um, I'm going to keep it really casual. But this is, um, this is a book that sort of, in the trajectory of an artist, and of an artist who shows the work of other artists, so there are many things that kind of shape us as creatives and kind of move us in different directions along our path. Um, but this book is, is one of them. The title of the book is Advice to Young Artists in a Postmodern Era. And the author is William B. Dummy. He has, uh, he's recently deceased. Um, he was professor, when I encountered the book, he was professor emeritus at Central Washington University, which is a state university in Washington State that I did not attend. Um, but I, I just encountered the book, I think it was in the library, and it sort of jumped out of the shelf. I think the title sort of spoke to me. Um, and so I'll get into a little bit of why, uh, but I brought two other books. I was gonna bring, I was gonna bring lots of visual aids. I was gonna bring, um, I actually went to eBay, and I found this, I forgot it in my studio, but I got on eBay, um, I'm sort of dating myself, we'll say it was a flash art, from a while back when I left university, we'll just say it's been a while. But um, I wanted to hold that up because it was sort of like, this book was sort of a remedy to that book. I left undergrad um, in the early 90s and it was fine. I went to school at Arizona State University and um, you know, it was, a, it, was, it was great. It was a fine education. Lots of studio classes, lots of um, you know painting, and, and a good handful of art history. But I didn't understand sort of how to do it. I didn't understand how to make a painting. I didn't understand how to clean a brush. I didn't understand how to create a mailing list. I didn't really know how to approach galleries. Um, and I certainly, even though I had art history classes, and I knew some of the important dates, the Armory show, and sort of a, a few other important dates, I didn't understand how the puzzle pieces fit together. Um, and so holding flash art in the early 90s was, was mystifying. It was very frustrating for me as, as a young person and just a young artist wanting to kind of make sense out of things. So um, I'm just going to set these down here. I'm not, I'm not his book agent, so I'm not, these aren't for sale, but you know, it's sort of good. They're hard to come by, actually. They're just, he's written three books or something. Anyway, um, so what is this? I want to start. I want to start my my talk um, because this talk is sort of um, about grounding, but it's also broken into two parts. The first part would be mentorship, and then the second part would be sort of um, historical lineage. Um, you let me know when I'm at five. Um, so I had a conversation uh, with my business partner um, and good friend Nick DePiro. So a lot of this is. Is his stuff. So if there's anything that's wrong, if I get any dates wrong or art historical facts, like just talk to him. It's his fault. Uh, he'll, he'll take off all my slack. Uh, but we were having a conversation, uh, and the note I got from Nick was first, you need to listen to more hip hop music. And I was like, yes, I do. Uh, and the second was, uh, you know, this song we were listening to just the other day, and it really kind of, kind of, there's a, lyric, a few lyrics in it. It's from an interview that Jay Z was having with, um, with, the notorious B.I.G., uh, where B.I.G. says, the key to staying on top of things is to treat everything like it's your first project. Like it's your first day back when you were an intern. Like, that's how you treat things, just stay hungry. And when I heard those lyrics in Nick's car, thank you, I thought that's exactly the kind of mentorship advice that I found in this book. This book really spoke to me on a few different levels. Um, but it actually had this really kind, sort of big brother kind of um, suggestions about how to approach the other, how to maintain your artwork, how to be diligent in your practice, how to not take it personal when you get, um, as an artist, when you get a rejection, um, because it's not personal. Often uh, institutions building a programming that, that has very little to do with the quality of your work. It might be they just have another hard edge, sparkly guy, you know, they just, they have, they've got him, we need a soft, round fuzzy, and I'm not that. And so, you know, it's not about the caliber of who I am as an artist or my work. Um, so, 
you know, this is something that I give to, to, to friends, and I don't think it's just for artists who are starting out. I think it's got really wonderful advice in it, always about just refreshing your, your spirit, like returning to this practice of making and contributing to a larger conversation. So the mentorship was really key, and, um, and that, that was really formative. The second part that really kind of opened my world was this art historical bit, and I'll read you this little section. I promise it's not long. Uh, but it's in the back, and he's sort of talking about the other two books he wrote. He wrote a book called Changing Images of Pictorial Space, and the other book he wrote, sort of diametrically opposed to it, was The Roots of Postmodernism. And so within these two books, he demonstrates that, quote, modernism and postmodernism are not just recent styles in art. Rather, they are recent manifestations of two opposing traditions that have been with us since the beginning of history. Um, so these traditions being, in the simplest of terms, form versus content, right? So I have never had anyone sort of take a stand in, in that way. It's a really reduced way of looking at art history, and I'm sure really terribly, like, misses huge, huge chunks of, of, of exceptions to the rule, but having solid ground to look at art history in this way, to see art history less as this sort of, like, race to develop and, and invent, to be the first, to be the first guy who dribbled paint on the floor, or to be the first, woman to paint cactuses in New Mexico or to be the, to be the first anything. This sort of weird like inventorship, like value based on getting to a finish line. Um, this rather presented this long arc of pendulum swing between form and content that I could trace from the Egyptians, thank you, um, to Greco Roman, to medieval art, to the Renaissance, and back and forth across history. Um, Jazz and blues, blues and jazz. Both have soul, both have spirit, both have heart and are creative. But one is creative more through form, and the other is creative more through content, right, the story. Um, so I sort of started to, to understand. And then I could get into the, the, you know, the sort of exceptions to the rule, the weird Jasper Johns. I could understand, okay, I get how he's in the middle of this pendulum swing, but I could, I could sort of kind of look back at our history and I see, I can make sense of this thing. I can understand this thing, I can approach it. And it became less of a finishing point and a threshold that I could cross over and get a little deeper. Part of the mentorship advice in this book was read above your sort of pay grade. You know, like, read books that are challenging. Read flash art when I'm in my early 20s and hate the jargon. You know, I hate that, I hated that they said, ooh, bro, it's a body of work. Why? You know, but okay, okay, I get it, I got it, right? So, and then I moved on, and, and so getting the, the terminology and sort of challenging myself um, became something that stayed with me, and being open. Um, and I sort of got a taste uh, in my own practice of less inventing, and I started finding the joy in just performing, whether it was more form and structure, more story and identity in who I was as a person and an artist, I began to revel and play more in those spaces. I think this book had a lot to do with it and his other uh, subsequent books. So I want to end uh, with Nick DiPiero again, all things to come back to our conversation. But, uh, and all things to sort of come back to 80s music for me. I was like a, a 70s kid and 80s music was my new wave, new romantic, the advent of MTV. So Nick cued me into this song that I hadn't, I hadn't really heard before by these kind of, they were kind of posts, they were after the new romantics, but they were called They Might Be Giants, kind of college rock guides, a lot of albums, some hits. Uh, but they have a really great song called XTC versus Adamant. Right? So you know XTC, they wrote Skylarking, the song Dear God, Making Plans for Nigel, Adamant, Ant Music, uh, Strip. So um, X, the lyrics, the first lyrics are brilliant. Uh, and, and for me, just bring it all home. XTC versus Adam Ant. This is your fault, Nick. <laughs> XTC versus Adam Ant. Content versus form. Fighting for their place in rock and roll. There is no right and wrong. 
So the pendulum swings. I think one of my things is there is no right and wrong. And uh, we'll just keep creating. And that's it for me. Thank you.